It's been a bit of a rocky start for our interior build and our boat restoration project. Just when we thought we were getting to the good part, things get a little complicated. But now we're figuring it out and our new installation is going up for good as we push to get this boat back in the water. This is Luke and I'm Lori and we have this amazing opportunity to learn and create as we go thanks to our Patreons and viewers like you. And if you want to see us complete the Lahakai and take on new challenges, subscribe to this channel, like this video, and ring that bell. It's a totally free way to keep the journey alive. So we started by putting everything in place and then immediately after, we had to take everything off. Now we're gonna clean it all up and get back on the right foot. got to business. We broke out another can of Interseal 960 to cover up those pesky spots that we had missed in those hard to reach places. Our friend Diego, a full-time boat builder, visited us to give us some pointers on the next steps of our project. We discussed some of our ideas to see if we were going in the right direction and mostly how we could wire the boat in the most effective way possible. where all the good stores are at with all the best prices for boating goods. And he showed us some of the things we're gonna need to get for our plumbing and electrical, like this bronze valve or this handy support that sticks to any surface. So we took a lot of notes and we made our shopping list and then we got back to work. and great recommendations as well and we've read all the comments and we're listening to all of them and a lot of them echoed some of our questions as well and some of our doubts so we're actually gonna call up 3TC and get on the phone with our engineers to see if they can answer these questions and let us know if we're using the right product and if we're using it the right way and everything's gonna go out the way we want it to so I hope so let's get on the phone with them Luke had a really long talk with one of the 3TC engineers and he also walked us through the best ways to install the panels in our situation. And 
that left us feeling so much better about our decision to go with this installation in the Lahakai. about our insulation and really concerned about corrosion from similar metals, galvanic corrosion. But we want to reassure you that this is not aluminum. It is not aluminum. It is not aluminum. It's not aluminum. And if you're skipping this part of the video, it's not aluminum. <laughs> so this is actually mylar. So as you can see, this is actually separated by one layer of mylar, some styrofoam, and another layer of mylar. And if this was foil, it would be very breakable. But as you can see, this is extremely durable. You know those blankets they use to, when people are in accidents, they cover them to keep them warm? That's what this is. <laughs> This foam also as well, though it does kind of flake a little bit like foam, it is really durable as well. I mean, it takes a lot to break it. We've been shoving it in and like pulling it out. And so it's really intact. Um, they have a glue. It does separate a little bit from the mylar, but that doesn't matter because inside is supposed to have air. The foam is supposed to be the air on the inside that gives it a little separation. What happens is, is heat transfer enters let's say our hull, right? And then it hits the mylar. And 93% of that heat transfer is blocked, according to them. Enters into the middle, into this foam, and that's where it's trapped for a little bit. And then when it tries to enter or pass through the other layer, 93% of that heat transfer that was left, the residual, is then blocked again and so your temperature on the inside is very much and dramatically affected by this tiny and very thin piece of mylar according to them so despite what you may have heard size doesn't always matter according to 3tc so this product actually is what they recommended to us this thickness now, they do have other thicknesses, and we've seen other people install um, thicker ones, but they said this is predominantly for this purposes was sufficient for us. The other ones, they actually have um, those trucks, like freezer trucks, and they have different thicknesses available for them, but according to them, and they have said it in many videos and repeated it many times, this thickness is enough to protect our boat and thickness matter. Even this tape that we're using is not aluminum. It's a polypropylene with an acrylic sticker that makes it look silver. Alright, so we're finishing up putting all of these insulation tiles back on the wall, um, on the hull, <laughs> and we're getting ready to glue them into place. To do that, we're using Cicaflex. Because we can't use contact glue, again, we needed some other resource in order to be able to like snugly move it in, but not destroy anything, and give us a little time before it dries.
So we have one inch and three quarters of an inch conduit tubes. We have all of our wires. We have how we're gonna cut this or this, depending on how difficult it is. And now we're going to install it in the boat. Now that we were on a roll, we were really excited to finally get to the actual electrical installation. And we were feeling way more confident after our talk with Diego about how we were going to install our conduits as well. However, despite all of our careful planning and measuring before, we soon realized that the frames of the boat were gonna make things complicated. We also realized that we might have to have the full design of the wood interior prior to finishing the full installation of the wires because we were left with so many questions. Like where would we have access to the wires and where would we definitely not? Where would we have enough space to pass a conduit? Where were the bulkheads gonna be? Can we pass a wire through them as well? Also, where is everything else going? This is why you gotta cover your hair. Look at this. Either I'm going gray, or I got a problem. It's not washing out every night. Ah!